Hello everybody. In today's video I would like to show you how you can use the diffraction pattern graphics of the match software in order to process your raw diffraction data. First of all I will run the match software and import the diffraction data. I have to confirm the wavelength suggested by the program which is kappa k alpha in this case just press OK. And now Match imports the raw diffraction data, performs an automatic raw data processing and also runs a search match calculation afterwards. As you can see the result is not very promising because there is little similarity between the best matching entry and the experimental diffraction pattern. And the reason for this is that there are many, many peaks that have been detected because of the noisy raw diffraction data. So maybe it would be better if I could define the peaks myself and do the automatic raw data processing on my own. Before I continue, I would like to show you what you could also do to get rid of these many surplus peaks. One of these options is to mark peaks you would like to delete and press the delete button afterwards. I will show you this here on the left hand side. I will move the mouse cursor to an appropriate position. And now in order to mark peaks I will press the control button on the keyboard. And if I now press the left mouse button and keep it pressed while moving the mouse to the left, you can see this yellow range that has been drawn and if I now release the mouse button all these peaks have been marked. And now I can simply press the delete button on the keyboard and these peaks have been removed. So you can see here below. Another option would be to declare this region of the diffraction pattern as to be excluded from for example search match calculations. In order to do so, I press the ALT button on the keyboard. Now the mouse cursor changes. And if I now press the left mouse button and move it to the left, you again see this yellow area. And if I release the button, now we have this gray background in this part of the diffraction pattern that shows that this part is not included in search match calculations and will also be excluded from Rietfeld refinements. If you would like to get rid of this exclusion of this area, you simply move the mouse on top of this area and press the right mouse button and it will be removed again. Okay, let's return back to our intention to edit the raw data manually. In order to do so, I will open a new match document and skip this step of the automatic import. Now I will tell match not to do everything automatically, but to leave it to me easiest way to do so is to adjust the user level here in the options dialog. I will switch it to expert and press OK. And now the program won't do any automatic processing of the data but leave it to me to do so. I will now import the diffraction data and confirm the wavelength as before. And this is now the result. These are the raw diffraction data that I have imported. And you can see all this noise that has caused Match to create many, many peaks that are not so reasonable. Okay, first of all, I would like to take a view at the background that Match has determined automatically. I will switch on the display of the background from the context menu. Now you can see this orange line here at the bottom. This is the background. I would now like to focus a little bit more on the lower left hand side of the diffraction pattern. That is 
I would like to zoom into this area. There are several options for doing so. One for example is to simply click the mouse button in the diffraction pattern and move the mouse around so that this yellow area is shown. And once you release the left mouse button, Match will zoom into this marked area. We'll now go back again. It is also possible to use the mouse wheel. Just place the mouse cursor at an appropriate position and then turn the mouse wheel step by step. And as you can see, you can zoom in and out just using the mouse wheel. Finally, you can also just double click at the position that you're interested in. For example, I would like to get a closer look at this part of the diffraction pattern. So I double click and I get a section of the diffraction pattern around the mouse cursor. Okay, now let's get back to the background modification task. I'm not so happy with the background in this part because it cuts away something of the raw diffraction data, so I would like to move the background line a little bit to the bottom. In order to do so, I will add a new control point for the background. Control points are these little squares in, on the background line. And if I move the mouse cursor on top of the background curve and press the left mouse button, a new background control point has been added and now I can modify this background control point below the mouse cursor just here. If I press the left button I can move the background control point around. If I press the right mouse button it will be deleted. This is suggested by the mouse cursor. Okay I would like to move it around so I just press the left mouse button and move it way below here. Okay this looks much better now. And in addition, I would like to remove this control point here by pressing the right mouse button. Okay, that's it. Now I would like to add the diffraction peaks. That is, I would like to define the positions and intensities of the peaks. In order to do so and uh, in order to make it a little bit easier, I will display a vertical line at the mouse cursor position by pressing Ctrl X on the keyboard. Now you see this vertical line that moves around if I move the mouse. And now I can place the mouse at the position where I would like to add the diffraction peak. In order to edit I simply press the Ctrl button on the keyboard and keep it pressed while clicking the right mouse button. And as you can see, a diffraction peak has been added and the intensity has been taken automatically from the raw diffraction data. I will now move on to the next position here. Press the control button on the keyboard again and click the right mouse button. I will now continue this position here and here. And now I have a little problem because I would like to continue to the right but I cannot see the corresponding parts of the diffraction pattern. So I have to shift the pattern to the left to see the corresponding parts. In order to do so I will press the shift key on the keyboard and now the mouse cursor has changed and if I move the mouse now around you can see that the diffraction pattern follows the mouse movements. So I will just move it to here and release the shift key on the keyboard and now I can continue to add the diffraction peaks. I would like to add one here. Again press the control key on the keyboard, click the right mouse button and move the mouse to the next position. Okay. Use this one here and here. Okay, I would like to stop here at this point. You cannot only add the 
peaks using the mouse, but you can also modify them. If you move the mouse over a peak position, then you can see that the mouse cursor changes. If you would now press the left mouse button, you can mark the corresponding peak. But I will press the right mouse button and keep it pressed in order to shift its position. And I will just move it a little bit to the right here and release the right mouse button. Okay, that's it. Let's now switch this vertical position cursor off and return to the full view of the diffraction pattern. This can simply be done by double clicking the left mouse button. And now let's see what we have. Let's run a first search match calculation. That's it. Oh, this looks rather promising already. You can see that Goethit ion hydrogen oxide has been determined and that's a clear difference to other phases. So maybe it's uh, reasonable to select this phase as matching. Okay, and now there are only little peaks left, so I can stop the phase identification at this point. I could now switch over to the Rietfeld refinement or to displaying the report as usual. Okay, that's everything for now. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye.